Hello, I'm Winkers of Cardboard Bastards, and I'm here today with a different sort of build guide than you're probably used to. I say that because it's very, very difficult to calculate the DPS of what's going on here. That said, it's definitely a lot. To illustrate this, here's some footage of the build in action on a level 89 character with level 19 gems. Yes, that's Kitava's Thirst. It has detonate dead and volatile dead in it, but first, let's have a little history lesson explaining why this item really started being something that people overlooked. You see, back in 3.1, GGG added a skill gem to the game. The Elder had just arrived in the Atlas, and Abyss was the Challenge League. Volatile Dead and Poet's Pen debuted together in this league, and they did wonderfully incredible things. They did this with the gem of the hour, Unearth. Unearth is a fascinating little bastard, doing what Desecrate does in what seems like a universally suboptimal way. Unearth has a few unique attributes, however. First of all, Unearth scales with projectiles. Additionally, it spawns corpses with a fixed level, whereas Desecrate spawns corpses up to a level based on zone. Alas, Unearth's time in the sun as one of the pieces to enable Poet's Pen was relatively short-lived. The unique's effectiveness was cut down over time, and it simply became another decent option going forward for playing Volatile Dead. Then, in 3.6, the infamous Synthesis League, Unearth was changed for the first time. It was given an impact point that did a small AoE, cast us at your character's feet, and you could actually shotgun multiple projectiles like with Creeping Frost. This wasn't enough to do much for the skill though, but then 3.13 came out, and with it, Ritual League. Someone at GGG decided Unearth could do better with a lower cast time, so 0.6 ended and an obscene 0.3 second base cast time took its place. Unearth had slowly gained power, and it wasn't alone. As trigger effects were looked over throughout the game's life, an item was seemingly overlooked at every pass, Kitava's Thirst went unnoticed. And to this day, it retains a 0.1 second cooldown rate on a 50% proc. This means anything up to 20 casts a second is a very noticeable improvement on the amount of cast you get from the item. But Winkers, you say? That will cost too much mana. And alas, you are right. While this combo was strong, it didn't quite get there. We needed something to push the mana sustain over the top in an entirely new direction. That's when masteries were added, and the last piece of the puzzle slid into place. 10% chance to recover 10% of mana when you use a skill. Spells cause you to gain mana equal to their upfront cost every fifth time you pay it. These two nodes alone are massive, but we get other small benefits elsewhere. Essence Glutton from Necromancer gives us the initial battery to have obscene mana regen. Corpse Pack's scaling cast speed bonus makes sure our mana regen capabilities are never wasted. Mind Over Matter turns it into defense, and the likewise new recruit mechanic makes Mind Over Matter into an even better defensive mechanic. You will cast fast. You will always have mana. You are a machine gun that creates corpses, and you're going to firebomb the whole damned Atlas of Worlds with them. Oh, and you don't need a 6-link to do it. I don't actually know what the DPS of this skill is, I just know it maps incredibly smoothly and blows things up well enough. It's also not a glass cannon, and requires a junk 1c unique to work. So while not necessarily a league starter, it is quite viable to begin your league with. But enough of not being able to talk numbers, let's talk about what will make the numbers bigger in a noticeable way. I tend to prefer playing budget setups, but some people like to push numbers, and honestly this build probably deserves to have its numbers pushed a little bit more than I tend to manage. Before getting bored, that is. I tend to play a lot of builds. Level 21 Earth gives you level 81 corpses, a plus one all skills amulet, and the Labyrinth Enchant push that to level 87 corpses. This is everywhere, all the time. With a plus one all spells weapon and a good glove corruption, I put the skill in gloves, you can get that over 90. Speaking of gloves, how do you feel about essences? Essence of Insanity gives you 16% more attack and cast speed for socketed gems. Yes, that's the sound of your proc rate going through the roof. What, phantasmal quality? Oh yeah, unearthed corpses can stack another 40% increased corpse life on top of the 70% you already have. How much damage is this? I don't know, but with Ashes of the Stars it's probably a lot. It's basically an experimental build. Except that an experiment was already conducted, and now everything between tiers 1 and 16 are a smoldering wreck. It does what it needs to, at least for you to play the game and get started. That much, I can guarantee. You've got over 2k mana with Mind Over Matter, Ludicrous Mana Regen, 10% reduced damage taken from enemies near a corpse, hint, they're always near one. Oh, and you're completely dependent on that mana. Hmm, if only there were a way to run an aura without using any of it. Oh yeah, there is. Eternal Blessing gives us determination for basically nothing, and that's what really put this build in the hilarious zone as far as viability goes. But enough of the hype, let's talk about how you get there. Start at level 1, kill a zombie for fireball, and set Hillock on fire until he takes a nap. He'll wake up when you get to Act 9 or so. Immediately swear off a fire forever in favor of Freezing Pulse if you're an old man, or Spark if you're young and hip. You could probably be smart and pick Stormblast Mine too, but in my experience this will get you shunned. After all, no one wants to be the creepy guy who plays with miners. Regardless of what you do, run to the mud flats, get wrecked by Roas, and then pick up a Frost Bomb Gem if you choose Freezing Pulse, or Orb of Storms if you chose Spark, or Stormblast Mine. Minor. Grab lesser multiple projectiles when you get to the prison, murder Brutus, grab Flame Dash, and mug Nessa for clarity, and unearth because man is kinda tough at first and you're gonna need unearth later. Then when you get to the beach, have a long hard think about how much lightning and ice suck, and try Volatile Dead. 
This is when you'll have a rapturous moment of pure euphoria and realize your life's calling isn't necessarily to destroy, but to put your balls in the face of every denizen both within Ray class and without. Follow the balls through the caves of the overtuned sea witch, make her choke on them, and then beat your way through the chamber of sin so you can repent. Grab your second quicksilver on the way, though, if you haven't had the second one drop. Trust me, it's worth it to kill the giant cave bear for this. You do save time in the long run. In the Chamber of Sins, you'll find a weird zappy bondage guy who looks like he crawled out of a Hellraiser movie. Kill him, and when you get back to town, Grusk will be so glad you found him a hot Oriathan woman to seduce will give you Desecrate. This tends to streamline the build from this point forward. Uh, even though you're not doing what you ultimately plan to, Desecrate with Spell Cascade just kind of gives you all the corpses you could ever need, and you're, you're going to run through the game without a care in the world. You can do this all the way to the end of the game, even. Uh, maps and beyond. Self-cast Volatile Dead is actually quite strong. At this point, though, if you don't have a Spell Cascade gem, go back to Act 1 and pick one up. Attach a Desecrate, and just have fun. For Volatile Dead itself, uh, you want to have Combustion hooked up to it. You can also do Spell Cascade, but I personally think Arcane Surge, uh, Cruelty, Inspiration, these are all better choices for the leveling process. Now all of that said, this isn't a beginner build. You're going to realize this as you go into Act 3 because you have a lot of stats to balance for all of your wildly varied gems, and that can be tough to do. You're also going to have committed a lot of skill points to mana that aren't paying off yet, and that can be cumbersome. Luckily, Volta Dead is so great that it's not going to slow you down much. So after you've slapped Gravy Sauce a new one and finished up your trials, go into Lab and get Essence Glutton. You need this if you're switching to Catavus Thirst early, and honestly, it's, it's pretty good just overall. It lets you start Mind Over Matter. As well. Grab Inspiration and Archmage, Teabag Dominus, pick up GMP in Act 4 as you put your balls in Malachi's face, and then cackle madly as you start Act 5. Grab a Determination and Eternal Blessing along the way. This is going to help keep us alive, and it's going to leave our mana pool pristine in the process. At this point, your skill tree should look kind of like this. It's labeled Start 1 in the POB, and it tries very, very hard to give you enough mana to sustain. You'll probably have some difficulty with that even though, though. Sorry. That said, you're going to be very, very close to the 100 mana cost you need. Enough plus mana is all you need to hit that magic number and switch over, because that's how Archmage works. This becomes easier as your mana value grows, but it's likely you won't be able to do it at exactly that level. Sorry to blue ball you in a build all about the orange balls, but that's the way it goes. Rushing Forethought immediately can help mitigate this if you're ready to go. Realistically though, the build comes online somewhere between levels 50 and 55. Some notes about actually making everything work. First, you need a mana flask. Eventually, you don't need a mana flask, but then you get corpse pack, and you need a mana flask again. Think of it as a flask that gives you tons of cast speed and keeps you from dying, because that's mostly what it is. Again, this is an advanced build. You want to constantly monitor your mana cost to keep it as low as possible without going under 100. It's not a real Archmage build, it's the Price is Right Archmage build. That said, Unearth actually puts out a fair amount of damage on its own, especially if you're standing right on top of an enemy. I wish I had more to say and show about this wonderfully bizarre and yet highly effective monstrosity, but in truth it's a half-finished build. It gets there, but it never it's never really been realized. But I think for the person with the skill to manage a build like this, that's probably a perk. Some things to keep in mind as you look for ways to scale it. Cinder Swallow Urn works. You have Determination, but lack elemental defenses. A Brass Dome might be best in slot here. When you're in a scary spot, you can always spin up tons of balls and let them run on ahead to clear things out. Fluid play is a given with this build. Just hold down move and tap right click to unearth every second or so and stutter step yourself through basically everything. Do not, under any circumstances, ever fire just one unearth. The first unearth creates corpses and so it generally won't proc Kitava's Thirst. Make sure there are corpses nearby, or you're going to feel like the helmet isn't procking enough, hence the stutter stepping playstyle. Also, this is a budget tree. I'm pretty sure you can do things with cluster jewels that will be superior for scaling, but it's hard to say for sure, what with all the stuff you do for minion damage scaling and other nodes along the way just generally being efficient. Anyway, I'm Winkers, this has been an experimental build guide, and good luck if you try it. It's a fantastic everything build, but I really cannot say for sure by any metric how far it will go for you. Breezes through red maps with garbage gear well enough, though. Thank you.